Hello and welcome to another edition of Hard Copy coming to you from our studios in Abuja. I am Terry Ikumi. It is another day as humanity marches on in the battle against COVID-19, which has affected almost every aspect of our lives. Now in Nigeria today, the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 briefs daily to bring Nigerians up to speed on efforts to tackle the virus. And it seems clearer and clearer each day that uh, this will not only involve the cooperation of the subnationals, but indeed the success at this level will determine just how quickly Nigeria will be able to subdue the virus. Tonight on Hard Copy, we look at the efforts of the states, 13 of whom now have cases of the coronavirus within their vicinity in their efforts to curb the disease in their respective states. And my guest is the head, Media and Public Affairs of the Nigeria Governors Forum, Mr. Abdurazak Bello Barakindo. Mr. Barakindo, welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you very much for having me. I think it's, it's safe to start this way. The conversation is different now from when it was when we had one case, when we had no case, when we had one case, three cases, and now our cases are in triple uh, figures. What's the conversation uh, of the Governor's Forum on this issue so far? The difference today, as we see it, is that uh, the NCDC has been able to advance its, you know, successes in the contact you know testing uh, which is a very as far as we're concerned is a very very important uh, way to uh, or, or effective way to curb you know the spread of this disease i know a lot of people have been wanting to be tested and have not been tested so it's been branded in nigeria as an elite disease but it's not of course uh, 90 to 95 uh, percent of the cases that are in this country are imported but that does not uh, remove from the fact that this thing has gone to states. And a lot of states has, have taken proactive action uh, by blocking their borders, by ensuring that anybody who has been in contact with any of the index cases has been fished out and is being tested and identified uh, by establishing isolation centers all over the country. And uh, perhaps uh, one of the areas where we have been looking at properly is that um, there are no tests, you know, centers in a lot of other states, probably because this disease has not shown up or shown its face in those places, or because, you know, these kids are not enough to go around. And uh, personally, I consider this a waste of resources for people who actually do not have contact with these things to begin to agitate for. Would it, wouldn't it be, so, uh, just like the Minister of Health has said, wouldn't it be instead that it's because we don't have appropriate laboratories in these states? I think all over the all over the world, you can see that a lot of uh, manufacturing industries are, are converting into production centers for you know uh, test kits, for masks, for sanitizers, and things like that. Uh, or automobile companies have been converted into these things. So it's. I think uh, Nigeria is a very special country when it comes to attacking emergencies. The World Health Organization has uh, actually commended Nigeria for the way it has approached this matter. And I think um, the manner in which the NCDC is handling it and, uh, you know, other states have been taking cue from that is uh, commendable. So the governors are comfortable with the way the federal government is handling it, especially the NCDC? Uh, to be frank with you, Nobody has taken this more seriously than the governors. I remember a night when the chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum that of, uh, and governor of Ekiti State, Dr. John Kayode Fayemi, sent me three press releases in one night, writing them himself and posting them to me and letting me you know, get them out. That's because of how seriously he views this thing. And that was before the 18th of March, when you know people were beginning to talk about locking down and things like that. Uh, at the forum level, I can tell you, uh, on, uh, when the minister came to address, you know, governors on the second national strategic health plan, they told him, we're not going to listen to you if you are not coming here to talk about COVID-19. That's uh, because of how seriously governors view the lives of their, you know, citizenry. And uh, other measures that have followed since the 18th have shown that uh, governors are very serious about safeguarding the lives and property of uh, Nigerians and especially citizens at the subnational level. Well, we understand that the governors have had quite a number of meetings. Most recently, uh, about two of them have been via teleconference. What are their biggest concerns as far as COVID is concerned? 
Yes, one of the biggest concerns of governors, we've had uh, two virtual meetings and I can tell you the attendance has been perhaps more than even the attendance of when they have to come to Abuja, even though people say governors are always in Abuja. We have had, uh, at the first meeting had about 32 governors, the second meeting had over I think 26 governors. And that is to tell you, uh, if in, in fact, in the second meeting, even uh, three of the governors that are said to be COVID positive were also in attendance. They, they called in from their, you know, the comfort of their, uh, their houses. But um, the major concern that I've seen among governors is the palliatives to, you know, uh, the ordinary man on the street. Uh, I would have thought you know, an issue that uh, governors would just think, well, once you are safe, you are locked up, uh, there is no need for any other thing. But I'm surprised and uh, pleasantly so by the way that they, you know, have approached what should get to the common man, how the common man would exist on a day-to-day -day basis and what the lockdown is going to do to the economy. So what, what are and, those details uh, on reaching the common man? We know the federal government is doing the conditional cash transfer. Yes. We understand that markets are shutting and opening at certain times. And the most important thing, as you mentioned, is ensuring that the common man who stays locked up in his house is fed. Yes. Um, one of the things was that, uh, I mean, in the, in the second meeting, second virtual meeting, uh, we had in, in attendance the Minister of Humanitarian and Social you know, Services, uh, uh, and uh, she mentioned how she was distributing palliatives to different uh, communities in the country. And I believe uh, two or three governors insisted that our people don't have bank accounts. Our people don't have the opportunity to go to the, you know, uh, distribution centers. And besides, it's dangerous for people to come together in a flock and uh, try to get, uh, you know, whatever palliatives they're getting from the federal government. So they insisted on, you know, getting in touch with specific, you know, agents around the country where, you know, who are very much in touch with the grassroots. And I think that concern really touched me because I could see that, you know, these are people who truly, uh, far from what people think of them, are really interested in, you know, the average man. From your submission, it does appear that the governors are still dependent on the federal government to provide these palliative measures which you initially mentioned. At this stage, we would expect that governors would have taken a step back to think of what they can do as governors. Um, it's, it's almost impossible not to look at, uh, not to look the way of the federal government. That's one. Uh, it's also almost impossible not to look at the way of the, you know, public spirited individuals in society. There are a lot of philanthropists who also understand that the Nigeria Governors Forum, which is the, you know, uh, main convening center for, you know, platform for all governors, they have approached and said, this is what we can help with. And they are helping, you know, the subnational level because they know the subnational level is the one that is most in touch, you know, with the people. Now, talking about depending on the federal government. Of course, the federal government is doing a lot, trying to, you know, ameliorate these problems or sufferings of the people. But how do they get to the people without the state governors? So the idea of this synergy between the state governments and the federal government is, you know, an imperative, you know, activity that cannot be uh, so, downplayed. So I'm trying to understand whether you're saying that state governments on their own are not putting palliative measures in place to at least reach out to the people, the, the most the hungriest of people in their states. Yes, they Beyond are, and I can tell you, they do. are. But the point is, there are states that are bereft of a lot of resources and uh, have to look, you know, elsewhere to get, you know, more uh, input into this uh, palliatives. I know that we have had meetings with, uh, you know, uh, the food beverages and tobacco employers associations. We've had meetings with the Manufacturers Associ Association of Nigeria. We've had meetings with uh, some banks and even telecommunication companies to come in and assist. And you know, all over the world, no state government or, or no government has been, you know, trying to solve this problem independently. They all solicit for assistance from here and there. Uh, and in Nigeria, we know, of course, you know, in just recent past, we have had problems with even having to pay salaries. So, and uh, well, a lot of people have come to the aid of governors, and uh, governors have also used, leveraged on their you know interactions and connections with uh, you know public spirited people to come and help in their states, and they are doing that.
I think um, when, when we look at this conversation around COVID-19, we look at it from two perspectives, states that have confirmed cases and states that have not confirmed. The conversation among the governors, how are they handling these two uh, aspects as far as the COVID-19 is concerned? Yes, I'm glad you are asking that because uh, this thing came up in the last meeting where states are complaining that, uh, you know, only the FCT... Uh, Lagos and Ogun State were locked down by the federal government. And the states had to take the initiative immediately to lock down their states because uh, Nigerians are inter interconnected, whether you like it or not. And because of that, states that have not been locked down by the federal government were locked down by the state governors themselves, um, uh, basing their argument on the Quarantine Act, according to one of the governors. And, uh, you know, that's a kind of proactive measure that uh, state governors have taken. And in states where these things have shown their ugly heads, there have been measures taken by the governments and uh, the state governors to really get those people immediately out of public glare so that they will be treated and before they return to the communities. And I think um, governors have been, you know, really up and doing as far as this issue is concerned. I, I'd like to know the level of commitment that um, the state governors are making towards creation, creating isolation centers in their state because the Minister of Health has pleaded with them repeatedly to set up isolation centers, whether you have a case or not. Yes. And uh, as at now, I believe that there are isolation, isolation centers in virtually every state in the country. And not only that, there have been very, very strong moves. I can tell you the chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum has not probably slept, even, even though he's in isolation for the past. I heard him yesterday telling someone that he was in isolation for 10 days and he's still going to be there for four days. But in all this time, I can tell you he's been active, he's been meeting with people, he's been, you know, advising his uh, colleagues about what to do and what not to do. And, you know, one of our flagship, you know, programs in the Nigeria Governors Forum is the SPRM, the, the State's Peer Review Mechanism. And uh, that has been used to replicate anything good that is happening. Remember that some governors are also medical doctors. So whatever they are doing in one state has been, you know, replicated in other states. And uh, that has helped in, you know, uh, stamping down, you know, the spread. Do you, do you get a sense that there's um, appropriate communication between the federal government and the state governments? Uh, I ask this because it would seem that some states uh, were not prepared, specifically Ogun State was not prepared for the lockdown, even though the president did announce it, and Ogun State had to take, uh, had to plead with the president to extend it, which will commence uh, uh, so later today. First and foremost, Ogun State happened to inherit one of the index cases from the onset. So Ogun State, and I remember during the meetings, the Ogun State Governor, uh, Mr. Dapo Abiodun, has been very, very, you know, uh, concerned. And uh, he was probably one of the ones who talked to the minister most when he came to address, you know, and I, I believe he was the one who said, if you're not going to talk about COVID-19, we're not going to listen to you because he has taken this thing very seriously from the onset. And you remember that one of the index cases also disappeared. The Ogun State governor had to come out personally to go after this person and make sure that this guy is quarantined and, uh, you know, uh, handled properly. Now, about communication, there is, of course, a very, very, you know, seamless communication bridge between the governors and the uh, federal government. And I remember about two days ago when somebody was supposed to talk to the federal government and the chairman said to him, look, no, it was even the minister who was saying, okay, I'll have to go back to the presidency and do this. And the uh, you know, chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum said, look, if you need help, I'm here, I'm available, I'm going to help you talk to the president on this. And I think uh, that shows that the, uh, you know, uh, doors for communicating between the Governors Forum and the presidency is very open. Uh, it's wide open. Another thing is that, you know, of course, when the federal government clamped down on certain areas, that's Lagos, Abuja, and Ogun mm -hmm. State, it is because Lagos is first and foremost the epicenter. Abuja is probably the, you know, most comfortable habitat for foreigners in Nigeria. And Ogun State happened to inherit one of the index cases. And there was no way, you know, the federal government would isolate it from. In fact, I remember governors were arguing that they had to also extend this ban to Oyo State because Oyo State is also very close to, uh, in very close proximity to Lagos. So it's, um, it's not a breach in communication. It's not a lack of communication. It's just that 
other states have taken initiatives on their own even before you know the federal government would do anything about it all right let's take a moment now and uh, go on a quick break and when we we'll return we'll discuss in details the measures that state governments are considering to mitigate the economic aftershocks when all of this ends stay with us welcome back you're watching hard copy coming to you from our studios in abuja our guest tonight is the Head Media and Public Affairs of the Nigeria Governors Forum, Mr. Abdurazak Bello Barakindo. And we're looking at the coordination of state governments in the battle against COVID-19. Uh, Mr. Barakindo, at this time, portable running water, which is important in this fight, and hand sanitizers are uh, considered luxury. What steps are the state governments taking to make sure that those who cannot afford these things can actually access them now. <laughs> I'm just laughing because you said uh, portable drinking water is considered no, running luxury. water. Yes, if running water. Running okay. water. Yes. There is um, there is no way you know uh, somebody who really wants to sanitize himself would not get to running water at least. Um, uh, everybody takes a bath once, at least once a day, and things like that. Uh, no, I, and, I need to put this into clear perspective. Yes, washing your hands in a bowl. It's not the same as washing your hands on the running tap. True. So it's advised that you do so on the running tap to get rid of the virus. And this is not something that is available to the lowest persons at the grassroots. Mm. I'm not very sure of, uh, you know, what you are saying is probably one of the wildest allegations I've heard people make. Um, so you think against... that running water is available in every part of this country? I would want to think so, but there are, of course, places where running water does not exist, but there are other alternatives to water. And I know that in some states, uh, you know, government has made available what you alternatives know, tanks. of water are you talking about? Well, there are ponds, there are rivers, there are things like that, and there is no evidence so far to say that, you know, COVID-19 comes from uh, water. Well, it may not be portable. But uh, that is not to say that government is not making efforts to make portable water available in any part of the country. So it's uh, probably, you know, right to say that there are some people, and that is probably less than, you know, a percent, a percentage point of the Nigerian population that don't have access to water. I do not have the statistics because that's not something I want to delve into. But I can tell you that efforts are being made for anybody who seems to be, you know, without anything at all to make these complaints necessary because uh, I can tell you we are in our communications with the uh, with uh, one of the com telecommunications companies uh, the Nigeria Governors Forum has made available 72 lines that's two lines per state that is uh, you know making sense of a call center where you can call in and say this is not available here or this is not available there so that the arrangements can be made to satisfy those needs. And I think um, in no time between now and the end of the you know lockdown, these things will be made available to people all over the country. So I asked that question because um, experts have said that if we allow this virus get to the rural areas where they don't have the facilities that we have to handle this virus, where they don't have uh, clean running water, mm -hmm. they don't have, they almost can't access soap or even hand sanitizers, mm -hmm. then we are doomed. True. True. So that's the, that's the point yes. I'm trying to make at this point. Anyways, let's move on now. Do you get a sense that the governors have learned a few lessons from this COVID-19 experience uh, in terms of uh, how, how the kind of investments they make to prevent uh, future occurrence or to be prepared for future occurrences. I'm talking about investments in the health sector, education, and the likes. I can tell you in one word what the chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum, Dr. Fayemi, said. He said, Nigeria has been compelled into a reset mode. Does it make sense to you? Yes. The country has been compelled, has been forced back into a reset mode. That means uh, there are probably things we're doing that we need to do differently. And if the chairman of the Governors Forum is saying Nigeria is in a reset mode, that means obviously they have learned lessons. And I didn't hear any dissenting voices when he said that. So it means everybody agrees that there is, we're in a reset mode. And uh, actually, you know, looking at these things seriously, I can tell you uh, with the attitude of governors towards, you know, uh, 
so solving the people's sufferings, towards ameliorating the needs basis of the people. I think, uh, yes, governors have learned serious lessons and they are uh, reacting very responsibly to it. I can tell you, I have been a, a critic well, for a well, long time, but uh, I'm, I'm beginning to see them differently. Not because, you know, I work with them, but because I, I sit with other intelligent people to analyze what they are saying and what they are thinking and what they are doing. And I can tell you, looking from behind, you would see that, you know, there's a lot of responsibility if we, to if, you, if we talk about ameliorating the sufferings of the people, look at it from one aspect, which would be um, the price hike in food now. What are governors doing about that? I would say, you know, I have seen states where people have gone out to even ambush people who are hiking prices. But what does it, how does that become the governor's responsibility if I'm selling bread from my bakery and I decide that bread is no longer 35 naira, is, uh, 350 naira is 450, just because I know people are going to stock a lot of bread in their freezers. I mean... <laughs> So we used to have an institution. So, what, what, what do the governors think is best at this time? I mean, ordinarily, you would expect that even though you don't control the market price, you provide alternative for people, you make supplies to people, so this way it affects the market price as well. I think governors have taken, you know, the most difficult alternative of providing people with the means of purchasing these things because they know that a lot of people are not going to be able to afford certain things. How have they been able to and, do that? Uh, yes, I, I know that uh, only yesterday I was reading that in Tambua local government of Sokoto State, the uh, households are being you know given, some are getting vouchers, some are getting checks, some are getting, and this is a way to you know probably ease you know the difficulty for people who would sit in their you know comfortable living rooms or whatever they are and begin to think how am I going to get this or how am I going to get that and this has been replicated all over the country I know that the O Arubo or as it is called in Yoruba is, is being intensified in Ekiti state I know that in Ogun state the governor said he was you know taking measures in Edo state uh, you know in Delta state people have all taken their different you know uh, strategies to see that they reach. I saw the governor of Abia State distributing Eba and uh, Obono soup to people. I mean, these are... That, that's a meal for a day. Yes, that's a meal that's for a day. That's not even for a day. But, it's but, a meal for... It's one meal. At least it's a meal. Look at it so this have, way. How do they get the next meal? No, look at it this way. If he's doing it now, there's probably a likelihood that he's going to do it or continue doing it is the, the first one he does is probably symbolic to show you that he really knows do that there think, are people who are think, going without him. you think that when the governor sit down and that conversation comes up, they would comment him and say that's probably the best measure he should have taken or could have taken at the time? I don't think that measure is isolated. And if you just sit and think that the governor has just given one meal of Eba and that's all he does, I think uh, you are not uh, really thinking like a modern human. No, uh, I, people I, would take people will take measures and will make some measures symbolic. I think that's symbolic. That's to tell you that this guy has thought of his people and knows that they have needs. The fact that he gives Eba or somebody gives a voucher does not mean, I mean, if you lived in America, you would see that if you get a voucher, you, you can't go and buy the best milk in a town. A voucher you, is yes. different from feeding person, giving, giving a person a meal. One what? meal in one day. Like I said. Will the governor distribute meals every day? Like, like I said, that one was symbolic. You know, there's, you are a journalist. You know that there are certain things you have to do for the cameras so that people would acknowledge. So you think that he did you, that for the cameras? Yes, I believe so. Okay. And when I heard people saying, oh, he's just giving Eba, I'm like, these people are not thinking. For a governor to come out of his, the comforts of his, you know, government house to come and distribute Eba to people means that he has thought through some of the things and probably there are other palliatives from behind, but this is symbolic for him to to be seen to be doing something. Uh, I think one Not more that. question I'd like to ask you is on what the governors are doing as far as um, the internal measures that they possibly could take when uh, all this is over as far as the economy is concerned. I mean, the, government, the federal government has cut its budget by about 1.5 trillion naira, which is a lot, and that would definitely affect the allocation mm -hmm. uh, to states. So are governors thinking about um, the after crisis of this, considering that their federal allocation will no longer be the same and how they hope to survive after now. Yes, I, I know that um, the chairman had talked about a lot of states reviewing their budgets and looking at, uh, you know, the vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, you know, uh, value of our currency and the 
you know, lack of demand for, uh, you know, crude oil and things like that. Mr. Abdurazak Barakindo, yes. I'd like to say thank you very much for finding time to come speak with us on Hard Copy. Thank you so much for having me. Well, that's where we'll leave our conversation tonight. We will always hope that you would find time to speak to us on what you've heard, especially if you've been affected by the lockdown. How are you faring? Please speak to us using handles on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Terry Ikumi. Good night.